Hi there. My name is Sivak Demirjan. This presentation is part of an educational series about kidney medicine and extracorporeal support. Enjoy. Today we'll talk about water treatment and dialysate production. First and foremost, know your source water and seasonal variations that affect your area. This in turn will dictate your particular system components. Your feed water needs to be in the right temperature, pressure, and pH for optimal performance. You will start with first removing particulate matter so you can protect the downstream more expensive components of your system. This is usually done with depth multimedia device equipped with a backflash mechanism for regeneration. Next, feed water is ready for softening. The resin media in these filters bind calcium and magnesium. This is done to prevent scale deposit in the reverse osmosis membrane, as we will see later, which leads to membrane fouling. This softener resin is then regenerated using concentrated sodium chloride solution or brine. The next step in water pretreatment is carbon filtration. This is accomplished using a pair of filter tanks containing granular activated carbon. Their job is to dechlorinate the feed water. The first tank, usually nicknamed primary or worker tank, should be able to get chlorine levels to less than 0.1 parts per million prior to feed water going through the backup tank, also called polisher. Next step is purification. The most common method is reverse osmosis which has its own high pressure pump and semi-permeable membrane to purify water. This is an example of a double pass system where the water goes through the membrane twice. The water is forced to flow across and through the membrane which does not allow the passage of dissolved inorganic compounds such as metal ions, salts and chemicals, and organic material such as bacteria, viruses and endotoxins. Our oil performance is monitored by percentage of rejection and water conductivity in a continuous matter. 0.2 micron filters, also known as stereo filters, are often used in the purification process. The last step in water preparation following purification is water distribution. Here we have indirect water distribution system where water is collected in a specially designed holding tank which communicate with the RO system to avoid overflow. Purified water then is pumped to individual dialysis stations, where online, on-demand dialysis production takes place at time of treatment. Dialysate production happens in the dialysis machine using a proportioning system where water and electrolyte concentrates are mixed to produce dialysate. The mixing occurs in the dialysate circuit by adding specific parts from acid and base concentrates to water. It is also warm and deaerated during this process. There are several proportioning ratios depending on the type of a machine used to generate the dialysate and each proportioning ratio requires its own acid-base concentrate preparations. After that, the mixed dialysate passes through conductivity monitor and also a pH test to verify adequate proportioning and the composition of the produced dialysate. Volumetric control is achieved using balancing chamber system the balancing chambers consist of two chambers, each with a volume of about 30 mL with a flexible, non-permeable diaphragm dividing each chamber into a fresh and a spent dialysate compartments. As one chamber is filled with fresh dialysate, the other chamber is filled with a spent dialysate which pushes in turn the fresh dialysate towards the dialysis circuit. 
and the sequence repeats itself. And the rate of which the solenoid valves open and close depends on the dialysate rate prescribed. Fresh dialysate flow to the balancing chamber is usually controlled by the deaeration pump. Whereas the spent dialysate return to the balancing chamber is done by the flow pump. Volume removal, or UF on the other hand, is controlled by typically a piston diaphragm pump, which is calibrated to one ml per stroke rates. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.